Very well, tell me your three suggestions. There are three of us and we share everything together. We each offer one. Then he reached into his pocket and took out a piece of stone and placed it on the table and said, I want you to sew me a piece of clothing from this stone. And his friends laughed. The Ottoman merchant said, Well, that's a weird suggestion. What else? The first friend of the gambler said, My suggestion is that we go to the seaside right now and I want you to drink all the seawater in one breath. The Ottoman merchant was upset and said, I don't think you guys are rational, but tell me the third proposal as well. The second friend of the gambler said, Here is what I want. I want a pound of meat from your leg muscles. And if you do not follow any of these three suggestions according to the agreement you have made, you have lost a thousand gold coins and must pay. Salam. Today I'll take you to a time when genies granted wishes, jinns controlled human souls, and many wonders could be found in the bazaars. I'll guide you through a journey that will last a million and one nights. The Blind Wise Man. The Ottoman merchant was angry and said, No, I don't accept it. All of these requirements are nonsense. I thought we were having fun and wouldn't be saying this rubbish if I was winning the game. I would have suggested that you sing loudly or give me a ride or dance in front of people, but if you didn't do it, I wouldn't have demanded a thousand gold coins. Nowhere in the world is it customary to force someone and your words are like the words of crazy people. I can't do these things and don't have money to pay. The gamblers said in unison, We can't tolerate these words. We were supposed to offer whatever we want, and we either want these things or a thousand gold coins. And when the foreign merchant did not accept the offer and did not pay, they made a scene, dragged the foreign merchant to the city's judge, and explained the game. The judge said to the strange merchant, There is no choice. Unlike Ottoman Empire, gambling and betting are legal in this city. You made a commitment and accepted it, and this is not a joke to us. Either do what they say or pay a thousand gold coins. Otherwise, anyone who wants to create chaos in this city is playing with his own life. This is not Antioch. This is the city of Venice, and everything is based on the law. If you have an answer, tell me. Otherwise, you must fulfill your commitment. The Ottoman merchant said, After all, Your Honor, these words are nonsense. And when their suggestions are not practical, they lose the bet. If you were in my place, would you be able to sew clothes from stone and drink the water of the sea in one breath, or stretch out your leg so he will take a pound of its flesh? The judge said, You are not brought here to question me, you moron. They have brought you to answer. It's a decision that you made yourself. If you couldn't do this, you should have thought of it from the beginning and not accepted those conditions. Now it's your decision, and you have no other choice. The Ottoman merchant saw the statement as inevitable and thought, if I can get the sandalwood back by tomorrow and sell it at a good price, I will pay a thousand gold coins and stop betting. So he told the judge, Please give me a deadline until tomorrow. The judge thought for a second and resolved, This is acceptable. I will give you until tomorrow, but you must give a guarantor. Otherwise, I will arrest you. He replied, Nobody knows me in this city except an old woman with this name and address in whose house I live. The judge ordered to bring the old woman and the old woman guaranteed to bring the strange merchant tomorrow evening, and everyone left the court. Then the old woman said to the merchant, Didn't I tell you don't do business with the people of this city? With his head down, the merchant replied, But they were talking about honor and humanity. The old woman said, Of course, they talk about these things, so what did you expect them to do? It is the world's custom that all traitors talk about honor, and all thieves talk about humanity. If it is otherwise, no one will be fooled and deceived. You are right. I always pay attention to nice words and lose caution. Now what should I do? The old woman, looking sad, started to walk. Let's go now. We will think about it until tomorrow. And if God wills, we will find a solution. That night, the old woman told her son the story of the Ottoman merchant and asked him to get help from the blind wise man and save him from the scammers. The blind wise man was an old former judge who was served by the old woman's son. He was a former judge who retired from the court and stayed at home since he became blind and was giving legal advice to people when they had trouble. He knew all the tricks and techniques of the justice system and the law and would guide them and be paid. The old woman's son brought the Ottoman merchant to the blind man's house, introduced him, and asked him for a solution. The blind man told the Ottoman merchant to tell his story from beginning to end. The merchant explained everything and said, 
Now I am helpless in this trouble with all these scammers. The blind man ensured him that there is no problem without a solution, and a man should not be afraid. He said that all their actions are tricks, and all their words and claims have answers. Then he solved the problems one by one, taught the Ottoman merchant the answers that he could use in the next day's court. The next day, at the appointed time, the Ottoman merchant appeared before the judge and said, I have come to fulfill my promise. The gambler group was also present. The judge ordered his clerks to write the trial and asked the gambling man, What is your case? The gambling man explained the details of yesterday's game. We are three partners, and according to the agreement we made, we have made three offers. And if this man does not fulfill any of them, he must pay a thousand gold coins. The judge asked the Ottoman merchant, What is your answer? The Ottoman merchant, who had learned his lesson from the blind man, said, My answer is that if these people are not tricksters and their words are following reason and logic, I am ready to implement any of the suggestions. But what if their words do not make sense? The judge said, Then what am I doing here? I will apply the rule of law based on logic. Then the judge asked the gambling man, What do you want? The gambling man said, As I said yesterday, I want him to sew me a dress from this stone. The Ottoman merchant answered, Okay, I agree, but I did not say I would perform a miracle. I am an ordinary person who does everything as is customary everywhere in the world and accepted by human reason. I am ready to sew clothes for this man from this stone, but the world custom is that clothes are made from fabric, and the fabric is either made of cotton or wool or silk or other things. But no tailor in the world uses cotton, wool, or silk directly to make clothes. Cotton, wool, silk, or anything else must be spun first and then made into cloth, and then clothes are made. This man also wants me to sew clothes, and I am a tailor, but I am not a thread spinner or cloth weaver. Your Honor, you are wise and logical. Order this man to make stone thread from this stone and weave a stone fabric so I can make clothes for him from that fabric. The judge said, It is correct, and he should provide the fabric. Otherwise, he should drop his charges. No, I can't thread the stone, said the gambling man. I take back my word, but these two who are with me have other suggestions. The ruler said to the second one, What do you want? The second one said, According to the contract, I want to go to the sea, and this man will drink the whole sea water in one breath, and if he does not, he will pay a thousand gold coins. The Ottoman merchant turned to the judge and said, Although this proposal is nonsense since I have promised, I am ready to act. But I am supposed to drink the sea water in one breath, and I am not supposed to drink the water of the rivers that flow into the sea. Just sea water. Now, Your Honor, as a just and wise ruler, please order this woman to close the rivers so that their flowing water does not go into the sea. I will also drink the sea water in one breath and show you the empty sea. The, the judge said, Correct. She must cut off the water of the rivers so that you can drink the water. Otherwise, she must give up fighting and her proposal is invalid. With an upset expression, the second friend said, I also take back my word. Then the third friend argued, I have another request. I want him to take a pound of meat from his leg, and if he refuses, he must pay a thousand gold coins. The Ottoman merchant turned to the judge and said, Okay, although this is cruel because I promised to make one of the three suggestions, I accept this one too. And since cutting the flesh of my leg involves my life, this man must also agree in front of everyone to act exactly according to his suggestion. That is, he should remove a pound of flesh from my leg. Nothing more and nothing less and not spill any of my blood on the ground because bleeding is a danger to my life and blood is not our agreement. The judge said, It is correct and logical. He wants to take a pound of meat. Still, if he takes one shekel less or more and if he spills a drop of your blood on the ground, I will order my soldiers to cut his head off in public so that no one else doesn't force anyone to risk his life. The third friend got scared and said, no, Your Honor, I refuse my right. Then the judge said, Very well. You took back what you said, but the law does not pass its own right. This fight was made by three of you, and each of you must pay a thousand gold coins to compensate the court's time. You'll learn not to talk nonsense in front of a judge in the future. And they took a thousand gold coins from each gambler and let them go. Then the judge said to the Ottoman merchant, You are also free to go. The Ottoman merchant said, now that I have seen that you are a fair and just ruler, I also have a complaint. I am a foreign man, 
and I did not know that there are many tricksters in your city. The other day a man from your city deceived me by pretending to be a merchant and stole my goods. I want you to take my rights back from this swindler. The judge asked for the name and address of the Venetian merchant and ordered him to present in the court. When he was ready, the judge said, Why are you taking away our reputation, causing our city to become infamous? No one will dare to bring goods? The merchant replied, I haven't done anything bad, Your Honor. He is a businessman. I am also a businessman, and we have made a deal with each other. We have both been satisfied, and we have written a document and taken witnesses. Now I am ready to act according to the agreement, and this is the deal document. The judge took the contract, looked at its signatures, and said to the Ottoman merchant, The matter is over, and I have no right to interfere in people's transactions. If you sold cheaply, you could have been careful and not sold. If I am supposed to invalidate a document as strong as this, the system will collapse. Tomorrow, whoever makes a deal and regrets it will break the deal, and we will have to have hundreds of cases every day. Our law is that we respect people's promises and signatures, and I cannot break the deal unless this merchant wants to give up his rights in the document. Then it's another matter. After hearing this, the Venetian merchant became assertive and said, Yes, we have made a deal, and I will act according to what I have written. Right now, you should get a change of your goods and testify in the presence of the judge that you will hand over the sandals to me. The judge said, Yes, if the buyer does not pay what is written, the sandals will be returned to the seller, but if he gives a replacement, the sandals belong to the buyer, and the dispute must end today. The Ottoman merchant had learned his lesson from the blind man and said, My point is that the merchant of your city does not want to act according to this document and wants to use tricks. The judge said, Then what am I doing here? Anyone who wants to use tricks in transactions and defame our city risks his own life. I am sitting here to prevent oppression. Of course, Your Honor. So please read the document and act according to what is written. The judge read the contract aloud. The value of the sticks is a pint of gold or silver or jewels, or a pint of whatever the seller wants and receives from the buyer. Then he said, Very well. If it is treated according to this document, we will complete the transaction, and if not, we will invalidate it. Then he turned to the Venetian merchant and said, Fastly prepare the change for the sandals and take them, because the contract validity period will expire in an hour. The Venetian merchant said, I already brought gold, silver, and jewels. The judge asked the Ottoman merchant, What do you want in exchange for your good? Gold, silver, or jewels? The Ottoman merchant replied, If the buyer accepts the document, can I ask for anything besides gold, silver, and jewels? The Venetian merchant laughed and said, This is what we wrote, gold, silver, jewels, or whatever else the seller asks for. What else do you want more expensive than them? Anyway, I also agree. Find out whatever you want. I don't want gold, silver, or jewels, said the strange merchant. Do you have flies, mosquitoes, lice, fleas, bedbugs, and these things in your city? The judge answered, We do, but what do you mean? The foreign merchant said, I mean that according to the contract, I have to choose my goods in exchange, and I want a pint of bedbugs, half male and half female. I am not willing to sell the sandalwood for anything else. The Venetian merchant shouted, This is nonsense. Where can I get male and female bedbugs? Where in the world is it customary to trade sandalwood for bedbugs? The judge said, I think this is a bit weird, but it is right. What is not right is your contract in which you have used a trick and asked to buy the goods of a foreign merchant cheaply. Where in the world is it customary to write the transaction document and not specify the price of the material and say whatever the buyer wants? This is what it is now. The sandal seller made a mistake in selling the material and the buyer made a mistake in writing the document and the result is the same. Either you have to predict the end of the deal from the beginning or you have to pay the price for thoughtlessness. The court's decision is based on your document. Either a measure of male and female bedbugs will be presented, or the sandalwood will be delivered to the seller. The Venetian merchant angrily replied, I gave up my rights in this deal. The judge ordered the sandals to be returned to the seller. The Ottoman merchant sold them for a reasonable price, and gave the old woman and her son and the blind man a colossal gift, and returned to his city happily. As we conclude this chapter, we thank you for being a part of this captivating journey. To stay tuned for the next thrilling story, simply subscribe and hit that like button. Your support means the world to us. Until next time.